Matt Stanyard. I'm the offensive line coach at Anderson High School. Um, I've been coaching for, um, this is my, ooh, this is my 24th year of um, coaching high school football. I got my start um, at Lachlan High School, Jason Kraus. He's now at the Fairfield. He was a head coach at Lachlan and, and hired me out of college. I, I played college football at Hiram College. I was looking for a teaching job and um, something opened up at Lachlan here in Cincinnati. And so I had the chance to come down and I uh, coached for him. Uh, and then had a chance to, to go to Anderson High School where I've been ever since. Um, I've been there for 18 years. And I had a chance to coach under Vince Seriano, uh, what a great legendary coach, uh, Hall of Famer. Um, and so coaching for him was great. And um, he retired and Jeff Giesting took over as the head coach. And I was coaching offensive line for him. And um, we, we installed and ran pistol offense. Um, a real good friend of mine was our offensive coordinator at the time, Mike Cook. And he, he and I kind of put our heads together in 2007, kind of put an offense together that was, was pretty good. We won the state title that year, which was Division II state title, which was pretty, pretty exciting. And uh, we ended up kind of morphing that offense into something where we ran the ball. Um, we had in 2009, we had uh, two backs, a quarterback and a running back were averaged 10 yards a carry for the year. We averaged 50 points a game running the ball. We hardly ever threw it. Um, eventually, uh, 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 Jeff retired and uh, Evan Dreyer came in and became our head coach and kept me on staff. So my fourth head coach, you know, coached an offensive line and um, it was pretty cool. And, and, and Coach Dreyer, if you don't know anything about him, it's a, more of an air raid style. So we throw it now about 75, 80% of the time. Uh, which has been a big change for us, but we still run the ball and it's still important to what we do. And um, Anderson has had a, a great tradition uh, before I got here and then continued on with, with great offensive linemen. Um, many, many guys go to Division One, Two, Three, many I um, you know, from our school, and it's been like a tradition. So we're really proud of how our offensive line plays. I've had the pleasure of uh, coaching two current NFL players, uh, Andrew Norwell and Greg Manns, um, which is really cool coaching those guys. And um, Zeke Correll played for me, and he's uh, currently up at Notre Dame and started in the, in the playoff game you know, against Alabama. And so that was really cool to see him. And we've got seven guys right now playing in college in all levels, uh, one, two, and three at NAI. So it's, it's really cool. Uh, and so that's a big part of coaching. We all know coaching offensive line is, you know, they're the unsung heroes of the team. And, and getting to coach those guys has been great. And, and seeing the guys that go on, and even the ones that don't play, but they go and they become you know, teachers and doctors, and it's, it's, it's amazing. So. Um, really cool experience uh, to do that. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, but one thing that's, that's happened with, you know, being an assistant for 24 years, I've been uh, coaching and an assistant for 21 of those, um, is that you, you have to kind of adapt to the, the guys you work for. And so going from a run heavy offense, a pass heavy offense, like how do you, how do you do it? And how do you um, adapt? And the fundamentals of offensive line play are the same, but the way you have to practice is a little bit different. So our head coach currently loves to go a thousand miles an hour. Uh, we'll run 80 plays a game, and it's not, it's not, it's, that's just normal for us. And so uh, he practices the same way, and everything is really, really fast. And so I had to get better at, at coaching and coaching in a hurry and getting a lot done in a really small amount of time. Uh, and so I, I kind of went to this pod concept, and it's a little bit different than what I've done. It's, it, it bases off of some things everybody does, but I kind of treat it a little bit differently. Uh, so what we do is, we basically group up into four offensive linemen in a pod, which can be split into two guys or four. Um, we use it to teach all of our fundamental blocks and, and our schemes. That's how we do it. So uh, it's great for in-season work, but especially off-season work. Uh, here in Ohio, we have um, off-season restrictions, and it's essentially you can have seven guys and one coach in a group. Um, and so the seven-man groups are great. You have five offensive linemen, and you can, you can – you can snap to a quarterback if you want or do different things. But I've never once had five offensive linemen have to go block only two guys. So essentially, you're, you're kind of stuck with how do I coach our schemes, how do I coach our drills when I can only have seven guys uh, the entire you know, offseason, really. Uh, and so that makes it really, really tough. So what I did was I, I broke it down into, okay, if I've got seven guys, what do I do? And I, I could go with a four-man pod. Uh, and then we've got these three extra guys. And so what we kind of try and do with our group is we just – limit them down to, to less guys and just roll with those. And then I kind of took that into the season and it worked out really well. So, um, and I was, a, where I was at before, um, like I said, Anderson, we're a division two school and, you know, in Ohio, that's the next, the largest division. So we've got a lot of players, but when I was at Laughlin, we were division six at the time. 
And sometimes you you had five linemen that showed up and three of them play defense. And so you know, how do you coach and how do you do that with a really small amount of guys? And so the pods uh, are great for that. Um, and they're great for if you go to big school and you got, or if you have young coaches that want to help out, you can give them a small group and they can work. Uh, and so it really helps to give you some flexibility um, with what you're doing. So our philosophy at Anderson kind of plays into that. Um, I truly believe um, that all alignments should learn to snap, uh, whether it's a traditional or a dead snap, it doesn't matter to me, whatever they're best at. Um, they also have to learn all five positions. Uh, and I think um, I had the opportunity in 2007 uh, after our state championship season to coach in the East-West All-Star game here in Cincinnati. And so that was a really great privilege. It was really cool. And so our first day of practice, uh, the offensive linemen come out and they all get in their lines, you know, and tackles and guards. And, and this one kid was really, really good. He's like, I can only play right guard. And I thought to myself, like, that's crazy. There are five positions out here and you're limiting yourself just to right guard. Like I would never want to sit the bench because I can't play left guard. That's that's silly. So I I really believe that learning to play all five spots is important. Like if you watched Alabama in the national championship game, uh, their best receiver played all over the field. Uh, and so I think that's a, a thing that that sometimes is overlooked. So how do you get them to be able to play all five spots? Well, the way we teach it, the way we do our pods, really helps with that. Also, we learn both right and left side stances. And so for us, our, our inside foot, the foot closest to the ball is our post foot. Or I refer to it as it's always forward. Um, and so we'll just go right foot, post foot, left foot, post foot. And the kids know that and they switch their stance. And so they learn both sides of the ball that way. Um, we operate primarily out of a two-point stance. Um, we do teach a three-point stance as well, but it's um, we only get in a three-point, to be quite honest, a few times a game. So. Um, but those are some of the things that we believe in offensive line. The toughness and everything comes out of, of loving the weight room. And that's obviously, uh, we all know it, that, that can't be overlooked, but you got to really love the weight room. That's a big part of what we do. Um, so here's an example one of our players getting a, a two-point stance and a three-point stance. Three-point stance, I know, I mean, drop his hips a little more and all those things, but we we do work on, on both of those. So what we do for our pods is essentially we break our groups into even numbers as possible. Um, if we have an odd number, then we have one guy that will just rotate in. But essentially, uh, I don't really believe in the idea of like two guys running a drill and, and 10 guys watching. So we are, everyone's in a drill, everyone is always doing something. Either you're holding a bag or you're getting blocked or you're, or you're blocking. Like there's really never any standing around. Um, we go really, really fast and run a lot of plays. So it's also part of our conditioning. Just never, never stop in practice. Um, we do one-on-one. Then it becomes two on two. Uh, we work on a right foot post foot and left foot post foot. So we always go through the drill and then we, we flop it before we switch. And I'll show you how that kind of works real quick. Um, so essentially this is like, we're down in the corner of the field. So I wanted to put this on there just so my head coach watches this, you can see. And this is actually way more field than we get. But they <laughs> put us all the way down in the corner and throw fades in the corner at us all the time. Uh, so if they, don't, if they don't catch the ball, I just punt the ball down the field and they go, they go that way. Um, this is kind of how we group up, and so we do it by either uh, the primary position you play or by size or by age. It depends on our team that year. It, it varies, but essentially you partner up with somebody, and we kind of have these two lines, and we just go. And so it says O and D, but we always work um, down and back. We go fast. Um, this year I had the opportunity to have a former player help me out. Um, Sean McCaffrey's up at Denison. He was able to do an internship with us since their season got uh, postponed, so it was really cool to have a, a guy come in and help out that could help run the drills and things. But this is great if there's only one of you coaching, because if you're at a small school and you only have like 10 linemen, well, you're going to see everybody, five guys across doing the drills that's really easy. That helps out a lot. Um, so basically what we do is we start out with our like, it's the same drills all the time. And the thing about it is it really, really helps us get good at what we do because we just rep, rep, and rep. So this is our, like our first thing we do, we base walk. So they'll come out and I'll be all right, right foot, post foot. I get a partner across from them and we base block. And it is the traditional six inch step of the right foot. We shoot hands inside levers, lock drive, like everybody else does it in the country. So we just do this base block, we go down and then we just put in the stifled whistle up to five yards. The, the guy on defense now just gets set on offense and they just come back towards me. So we don't flip and walk around. It is just down and straight and then right back. So we'll do the same thing versus a shade. We'll base block. Right foot, post foot, base block versus shade, try and drive and dig a guy out. Um, that's kind of our foundation of our inside zone. And so then we'll do that. And then I'll go left foot, post foot. We do the same thing, go back to base block, then fit and drive. And we'll get a couple reps each time. 
Um, as the season goes on, you can take less reps of some of the ones that you've done a million times and get really good at it and focus on maybe some areas that you're going to need that week. But at the beginning in camp, all off season we do this. So when we do a seven man group, this is how it looks. We go out and it's like the first thing that we do. So we'll do a base block, um, vertical wheel, hands inside, pitch drive, wide base, all of the traditional things, and, and bit and drive. And then we'll go to reach block. And so we do the same same guys, same groups, and this and that pod from previously, we're all individually grouped up. And they just reach to the right. You know, we'll take a bucket and run, try to you know, reach the inside arm and stab, all those things. And then we'll do the same thing, we'll move them a gap over and really try to reach the reacher. That's a hard one, but we just try to get there and get running and get in front of them. Um, the good thing is, is like this kind of reach block drill can, can almost double for us as the, the front side of like a sprint out pass. It's like similar stuff. So it gives us the opportunity to kind of dual teach a little bit and get a lot more reps in. So we'll do that um, post foot going to our right. We'll switch post foot and go to left foot post foot and go to our right. So we work both sides of the ball and then we'll flip and go to the left. So it's the same thing. We do our base block and our reach block. That's how we like to um, The next thing we'll do is we'll jump into down blocks since we're the same, same guys in the same place. Um, when we down block, I always make sure, and it's hard for young guys, especially, they want to just stand there. You know, young defensive offensive linemen playing defense just stand. So I make sure they always have to step across the line. We've got a turf field. You know, most people do now. And so it's great. They get on the line. So you have to step all the way across the line. So when we down block, we're getting like a look because, you know, most guys don't do that. So um, in this case, if we're down blocking to the right, we've got a right foot post foot, we take a big J step with our right foot, try and get that momentum and get moving and get our get our head across traditionally, but our back arm is our catch hand. And so we bring that. Um, so if they try to spike over top, we can stab through them with that catch hand. Um, got that from Paul Alexander like years ago, he talked about that. Uh, and so step down and bring that catch hand to try and grab, punch and press through and drive those guys. And so we start with the chain and we go a little bit, a little bit wider up. Um, then we progress into what's like a fan block, which is a hard inside step. And we pivot off that inside foot and crank the inside arm and punch. And then it becomes a fit and just a drive out. So basically widening the front side of plays if you're if you're man blocking guys. It's kind of our hard inside steps. They can't cross our face, especially now because so many teams we see play a heavy four eye on the tackle. We want to stab in the D gap. So this really kind of helps us with that, a hard inside jab step. Take that inside arm, smack them and crank them out of there as we drive. So we'll do the fan block. Um, left foot post foot and then right foot post foot going the opposite way. So we always switch these. So it's always, always switched. Um, when we're done with that, we'll go and do um, our zone double team. So when we get through all our individual blocks, then we hop, we just take the two pods of the two groups of two and we just condense it into four guys. And now these four guys, we're just going to, they're just going to kind of roll. So what we do with our zone double team, our zone double team is a real vertical double team. So what we do is we, we get our splits are pretty big. I'll show you some film coming up and you'll see our, our splits are really, really wide. So it's a little bit different than, than some teams. But uh, what we'll do in our zone double team is we will number one get our eyes on the linebacker right here. So is this inside guy who's got a heavy technique on him right here? He's heavy on top of this guy. He is going to take his first step, is going to be a vertical step. So we don't have our inside step, we'll vertical step with that. Um, with our right foot, and our right, um, his partner to the backside is going to step with his right foot. And that's going to kind of get us flat and get us moving in the same direction. All of our eyes are on this Mike linebacker right here. And if he wants to spike, we want to get our hips together. I want to drive this guy straight back into that Mike linebacker. So when we get to that, we're going to drive him right back, right up into that mic. And our goal is to press that guy right in the lap of that defensive lineman. So we give our call, you me call like everybody else does, if he wants a knife over top. Then that place I got will drive and he'll just step right off and punch. I always tell him it's a one step fit. And so, what I mean by that is when you're zone double teaming and getting vertical on somebody, you don't want to step off and take more than one step to gather. And that second step should be a strike. If you're chasing somebody, you come off that double team way too soon. So, I just constantly preach to guys like one step fit, one step fit. So, as they drive together on this down man, on our inside zone, all four of us have, all two of us have our four eyes on this mic. We're all staring at the mic, ignoring that down man. And wherever he goes, one step fit off there. We hip him off. So I always tell him, uh, it's like watching hockey, they body check, they, they throw the hip check into somebody. I want that second guy that's coming down on that double team. He sees that mic step over, 
he's going to use his hip and push that postman off. So he takes that one step and bam, we can fit right up on him. So it's real physical, kind of bump him off and drive. Um, we'll do different techniques on the, a heavy shade based on our strength. Sometimes we'll throw a flipper, sometimes we'll use hands, sometimes we'll uh, gallop step into him and dig with our inside leg. Different techniques based on the guy, but that's our, our fundamental on the inside zone. Uh, and this is the exact same thing on the inside zone. It's just now we're digging and driving and if this guy were to step and fire to the, the second guy, who's our drive guy, then the postman just hips him off and then he takes him. And I, my coaching point, I always tell these guys, and it's pretty simple. It's like, if you're looking at him with both eyes, when I'm driving the guy and his, I can see him and he leaves two eyes and goes to one eye is all I can see, I should start hipping my partner off. When he completely disappears, that's when I bump him off all the way. Because once he goes all the way over there, if he wants to try and come loop back all over, it's just too late. He's caught. So it's we use our eyes to help tell us when to bump off on the double teams. And it really helps. The post guy is the first guy of the season. And so he, if he starts to show his right eye, he's going to hang on. He loops over the top of two eyes, then he'll step off. So we kind of use that as our gauge when we work our, our zone double team. So it's just that same group of pods, the same guys doing the same thing. When we go to our outside zone, same concept. He said, now we just move it when we're doing that reach step. And then that reach step becomes the same thing. We're going to attack through the shoulders when the press get hips together. Our goal is to work up and get in front. If he wants to overscrape, then we just wash him to the sidelines. So um, I always tell the guys that when those guys want to do those things and sprint out of there, then we're going to accelerate their decision. So if their decision is to get over the top in a hurry, we're going to make them get over the top and go way faster than they want and push them all the way out. And so we're going to make them wrong, kind of like judo. Make their move against, use their move against them. Same kind of thing, just wash them out, wash them across. Um, same thing here where they spike and, and they want to they go to our outside, and this mic wants to fill. Then, if we feel air as we're stepping across, that down man's gone, then we'll get square vertical and try to get to his front side number. So, that's the same, same kind of principle. Wait till the last minute to get there. So, gap scheme wise, so we get through zone. We do zone all the time. We go through our inside zone stuff, and it's our basis of our, our base block and double team. Now, when we go to our, our gap, same concept. We're going to look the inside guys nearest to the linebacker right here. He's nearest to him. So he's got his eyes. Once the ball snapped, he's going to you know have his eyes over there and look. The second guy is coming down, and he's going to spear through the hip. And he's going to spear through the hip, and his goal is to drive through the hip and, and lift this man and drive him if, until he sees the mic. If he doesn't see the mic, then that becomes a down block. So as we actually worked on earlier, it's a J step, run down through and go. So this is the same exact thing, the down block, J step, and run through. And now that catch hand is waiting and that inside hand will spear through the hip. So it becomes the same drill as before, now it's transferred over here. The inside guy on the double team is doing our base block. So he takes his right foot step and he's gonna be here. He's going to right step here, and he's going to be have his eyes over here as he's Jay stepping down the drive, and we're reading this linebacker. And this linebacker wants the knife underneath to take it, then this stab becomes a down block, and he just steps up and, and turns that into a base block because that's one step fit and go. So it ends up being like a base block inside zone here, and this is a down block to stab, and that's kind of how the double team forms. Um, and we drive that. When we get in our goals to stab through and just run, sprint, and displace him as, as far as humanly possible. So that those earlier single block drills just translate right to here. So I'll just tell them it's a base block and you're gonna look, look treat it like zone and look over here. Second guy's down blocking and he's just gonna stab through the hip. So it's like the same, same words that they hear all the time. Um, we go into the same look here. We get a scraper, nothing's different. So as I take my base step and drive and I'm J stepping down and running through the, the hip, the inside guy's eyeballing this mic. If he wants to flow over the top, this now becomes a drive block, and they're gonna basically double team that now. It's gonna be just like our zone double team, except we're gonna press it because I want our goal is to get this outside guy to get up top and be the one that pins. So I talked to him about being like the guy that the pin the block. He really wants to, and the way I teach it is to get in there and, and to stab. He's gonna get in here and stab and press, and then he's gonna get up and try to get square to pin this guy and make a wall. Just to pin him in, bang, and to seal him right there. And we can make our cut. And there's some examples of that coming up in the film. Later, we'll see. 
Um, so then we take that, so that's all our zone and all our gap schemes, and we're kind of done. We have fan block, which is like expanding on the front side. And so this is our hard inside step and pivot. So I'll just tell them like, we're gonna fan block and they come down and we just get two over two and they work this fan block. That way it helps with like, what helps with this? And it seems kind of silly to, to maybe some guys, I don't know, um, to work this with two guys when you're essentially doing individual blocks. But what it does, and this sounds kind of, kind of crazy, but this inside guy by turning him out can keep an eye on this guy. And so when he turns him out, it can help him learn when not to dump this guy into the back of his legs. So it sounds silly, but it's like, you got that inside guy turn, he's a, you got a chance to pancake him, but your partner is right there at his back to you. Don't throw him into your buddy's legs. So just keep keep positioning and keep turning, keep, keep cranking him and don't dump him in, in your buddy's legs because we don't want anybody to get hurt. If you're, if you're hurt, you're on the sidelines, you know, sidelines will not win games. So it's kind of like that proximity drill to kind of learn where the other guy is at and they kind of feel it. So it helps a little bit with that. Then we do the same thing, but I put them on movements. And then what does this stuff? You've got your two guys and two guys, and you go here and you go there. But what it does is they work this fan block where they're working together and it becomes essentially like a two on two drill. It's almost like an inverted zone, like zoning the wrong way. So what they do here is like a left foot post foot, for example, they're right side guys. Um, they're going to take their hard inside step with their with their inside foot, their hard inside step is how we block it, and they're going to pivot and turn out. Well, the minute they see this backer where their eyes are supposed to be, want to shoot that gap, this end has to go outside. So I can just take a slow pivot and turn, and then I can just go and attack him inside and try to get my hand dominant hand on that field shoulder. So that way I can turn him out. So we talk about reading the backers, and that really helps you know what the D line's doing. Because those backers will tell you the backer wants to shoot the B gap and ends on a good C gap. So it really helps you kind of understand that. And so we work that drill, that twist combination, and we also work it going this way, where we have the end spike the inside and then that Sam come to the out. So when this happens, which we get a lot, especially nowadays, um, it's funny how much has changed over the years. Now we're getting so many four eyes. These guys are playing hard B gap. Must have been the, the clinic talk of the year for the you know the defensive guys. Um, but we get so much of this heavy inside shade. So now what we'll do is we jab step to the inside and he'll, he'll take a jab step to the inside. Granted, if he's not covered, it's kind of like a little baby step. It's not as big. Um, and then we just want to squeeze and end up turning this into a double team. Double team with our eyes on the sand. And we'll drive it slow. He wants to run. What's our rule? One step fit. That doesn't change. So now that footwork has just turned into that double team drill. One step fit, that guy wants to fit. He wants to blitz, we step off one step, bam. We see him to the outside, inside guy presses the inside hand. We get him turned out and we made a hole. So it's kind of how we teach that, that fan block. So then you get through some of those basic things with these two guys, we get in the, our gap stuff, moving around. So it's the same concept. Uh, you can do it any way you do it. So any of these drills, if you're like, well, I don't, we don't fan block ever. Um, we're a veer team, it's the same thing. Just take your guys run your veer course. Whatever you, whatever you do is fine. It doesn't matter. Um, it's all relative. Just your basic blocks. What do you do? Those are the most basic things that you do. This is how we, this is how we do. This is how we rep, 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 rep. Um, so here we have our back block, I call it. So this is where we get in a balance stance. Everybody works a balance stance. So that way they're looking to go play center. They know how, they know how to do it. Um, and our back block, essentially, when you block back for a pulling guard, and then that D lineman knows it's a gap scheme. So where's he going to go? He's got one of two choices. He's going to try to try to backdoor and undercut you, or he's going to do what most guys do, um, that is he'll sit and try to press, and then he's going to chase and run. He wants to get up over the top of that and then make the tackle. So how do we how do we defend that? Honestly, we attack through, and then I have in the drill, as I'll say, if I you know I give a cadence, so he'll let they go, and then I'll say hit, and then he'll take off running over the top. And we work on pursuing him, maintaining contact, extending the arm, running and running with him. So as he runs, we run. And so that's one of the drills we do to work on maintaining blocks downfield. And then you can do the square pool, skip pool, whatever you call it, um, to get around. And we just kind of fold around. So it's an old block back fold around drill. So we do that one. Then we flip it both sides. So basically the way we do the drills, all of our drills, and maybe I should say this at the beginning, um, if you hit a bag, you hold a bag. So if we, we bought some of those, um, Charles Bentley, those pain pills, they're awesome. So we use those a lot. 
So when you go back, you block and you hit that bag. When the drill's over, you just grab the bag and you swap spots. So there's no like running around, waiting in line. You know, it is just, you hit that bag, you grab it when you're done and you turn around and you get set because the next guy just gets, get replaces you and go. Everything we do, it's just hundred miles an hour. We just go, 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 go. And I'm just in the back watching footwork, watching hands. You can see let's get so many reps. They get so much better at it. So then you can take whatever you do, um, same thing play side. So your left foot post foot, we do a two on two, down block, open pull, kick out. Same thing, down blocks, J step, stab through, catch hand, none of that changes. So you're getting extra reps with all the stuff that you've done earlier. And then we've got an open pull and kick out. So we do an open pull and kick out, work on throwing hands, throwing the forearm, all the different kick out techniques that you want to do, where you put your head. Is it a log situation? Is it a kick out situation? Is he going to give you a guy that wants to, is he dropping? You got to chase all those things. You can work a different one each day. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's the same concept. So you're working this down block and then this open and kick out. Uh, and then we just flip it, flip our feet and go the other way. A couple reps each, just rolling right through it. Uh, and then we just go to the backside. And so sometimes I'll take um, an extra bag and lay it here. Or sometimes I'll just like stand here so I can watch it from the other side, see if their heads are up or their hands are. And you can do a, a backside. So right foot post foot, your left guard, left tackle, backside pull and kick out, backside wrap through. It can be a square, or a skip pull, whatever you call it. If you're an open pull guy from the backside, it can be open pull. Doesn't matter. Same kind of thing, same kind of drills. Um, these guys can, I usually give them free reign to do whatever they want and they try to make guys miss and, and all that kind of stuff. The best thing is this translates to anything. So if you run screens, this translates to the screen drill. Kick out and wrap them through in the alley. It's the same stuff. Um, you can just have them show hands first, boom, and then go. So it doesn't doesn't change what you do. Um, so then going back to your your base blocks, sometimes what I'll do later in the year is I'll just take the D line and, and I'll, I'll move them back, and we start from three yards away, and then we just we'll show hands and then go like it's a draw, or we'll just take off and, and feel air and get vertically blocking the linebackers. We do we we mix up how we how we do it, but it's the same like concept all the time. Then we um, combine these pods in the schemes and create a complete run game scheme, you know, power counter zone, whatever you're going to do. And, and the phrasing of it allows for easy adjustments in different game situations. Uh, so you can essentially install all these different blocking concepts without ever telling the kid what the play is. And then you can say, okay, we're going to run this play today. We're going to run power. And you're going to go boom, 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 boom. You just tell them what the, the different blocks are that they do. And then it just all fits together. It's like putting together route concepts. You know, you got a curl here, you got a flat. Well, the kid knows what a curl and a flat is. And so it all just builds the same way. So, <clears throat> for example, like typical zone. Inside zone, we're going to read the backside end. Well, backside is a zone double team. We did that at the very beginning. Next two guys are zone doubles, and the front side guy's a fan block. So it's super simple. In a game, if they were to walk somebody up up top and kick them over the sidelines, like, what do I do? What do I do? What's the ball? You're just going to base them. And so the phrase is, a phrasing just really helps because they can communicate. Well, coach, we were going to double, zone double. Now what do we do? Well, what's fan on the front side? You, know, you can make adjustments. Makes it really easy to do. Um, and you can basically install a play. As long as they know the stuff, they learn all the spots because they know what the concepts are. And it makes it really easy. They don't feel like they're just a guard because they've done all the things in practice. So here's an example of kind of how we do it. Um, so this is... I'll show you this, the sideline, I'll show you the end zone. It broke up too. So here we go, run inside zone. All right, so then we get to the end zone view here. All right, so this is what we get. This is how we look at it and kind of how we teach it. So they're lined up right away. And this is it. So we have essentially um, from the left side over here, this is actually an extra lineman that we bring in uh, sometimes. We play six linemen sometimes. Uh, that's a great way to, to give a team a different look and a great way to get the a young and up-and-coming player on the field. Uh, doesn't need to be all the time, but once in a while, I'll give him a little package. Um, so if he doesn't know what to do uh, and, and we're running zone, I just tell him, you know, what does the guy next to you do? Well, he's run zone. Well, then just get in the zone. If you're unsure, what does your tackle do? If you're the extra guy, if you're a tight end, you're unsure what your tackle do, just do what he does. Great way to kind of get them, give them something to think about if they're not sure. So this first group of guys here, they're going to zone double. The next two, the center and the other guard, are going to zone double right here. Backside guys are going to zone double. And then we've got a, a guy over here on the edge that's maybe unsure. So it's a base block. 
And so it's just really centered down like zone double drills. Uh, they're working their way up. They work their zone double and they're here. You can see this left side. These guys got a pretty good job over here. Our center had to work over some. So he's over in this group. These guys are working this group. So we got these three zone doubles. This kid's getting into the zone. That's his job over here. And we got a base blocker on this side. Pretty much taking those pods, just like what we ran in all the drills, getting transferred right into a game situation. And you can kind of see how that fits up. So now by the goal line, it gets to be kind of much, but you can see this kind of know their, know their job. And, and there we go. So there's another situation. Maybe you're going to run a different scheme. This is like speed option. So maybe you're going to run the zone principle. Same kind of thing. Here we have these guys going to work their way up. So here we go. We've got base block on the backside, two sets of zone doubles. And the front side guy's just going to get in the zone because maybe he's not sure. He's on the front side. He's got no edge, got a block. So there's no one, nothing to do over there. He's just going to get into the zone and help out. Um, but it's all the same blocks that we do. All right. Then they get, you can see it ends up fitting across right here. We've got everybody got a hat on a hat, as they say, because we've got this this group of these same drills that we always do just kind of fit as we get moving. They just get to those spots. They get used to their double teams. And the thing is we just rep, 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 rep. So instead of lining up and running plays against defensive practice all the time, we just do these pods over and over and over. And we, that way when we get out there, they just understand their concept and what they're doing. And it makes it really easy for them to get a hat on a hat. And there we go on the speed option. All right, the end zone's a little. A little bit of sun here, early game in the season. But you kind of get the idea, same thing. We get moving, we'll get our, go into our zones, follow our rules. Um, you go step down to help in the zone and you feel air, then you get vertical. So our guard feels air, there's no one to block. So that becomes a base block at the second level in their rules. So just some, some simple rules that we, we like to follow. All right, here's a, another example of the end zone. This is a zone, but we're going to uh, insert the tie down. So just your zone concept. Uh, instead of having to get there and get lined up in practice and go over like, okay, if this guy's here, we do this, if this guy's here, they just know their rules and they know how it works. So these guys are both covered. So they're double fan over here because there's no one to zone to. And then we've got our tight ends inserting on the backside. So his rule over here then is going to be he's in a fan block because he doesn't have, he's got no one to help. So here they go, they just do their job, we get to the next level. So it's just taking those different pods and putting them into the game situation. All right, one last one, same thing. Got an extra tackle in over here. So this becomes a zone double for these guys. He's covered up, so he's in a base block. These guys will zone double and he fans. So just our drills over and over again, they do the same thing, get a hat on a hat, and there we go. So it keeps it pretty simple for the kids uh, because it gives them the opportunity when guys walk out they understand what they've got to do based on the rules and it, it makes it really simple. So you can do the same thing when you go and go with the counter scheme. For example, if you want to fan the backside, uh, backside kick out, the back block, which we did in the drills and gap double. So it's just pairing all these things together and the kids just understand the rules um, when we do that. So here's another example of how it's all pieced together. Got a counter. All right, so we go from the end zone. So same thing. Get your backside fan. Um, we're wrapping, backside wrap with our tight end. Our tight end comes down and does those drills with us. We get him for a little while. Um, he comes down in the run game. Uh, usually the first thing to get down in practice, he'll go over and catch balls and warm up, and then he'll come over and he'll do run game. Um, so we get him in there, get a backside kick out, gap doubles and a down block. So it's all just kind of individual drills that we do. All right, so here we go, our tackle. Uh, does a good job here. His job on the down block, he ends up, there's no one to block on the down block. So when he, our tackle on this side comes down, he ends up, there's no one, he gets vertical, vertical checks, checks, then he turns back out on, 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 on the, the next guy that's the next threat, whoever it might be, safety, whoever it might be. So the same thing, taking those ideas of those pods and just putting them together to make plays. But we don't really practice a lot like this unless it's you know, inside run period. But a lot of it is just, just that pod work over and over again, uh, which is a lot of what we do. Same thing here, another counter. I right, get the same concept. So we have the idea of guys move around, guys are shifting, we go really fast, but they know the rules. These guys know they got double, he knows he's walking back, kickouts, wrap throughs, and fan blocks. So the same thing over and over and over again, just repping it, 
and they make their adjustments um, when we get through our plays. So it helps us in the game, helps us quite a bit. Um, same thing when we work like a one back power, for example, it's the same concepts. We have the fan blocks on the front, the back blocks. You can kind of see these are the drills. These are the little pods over here. You can just break it down. We work with these guys all the time doing their thing. This is the drill that we did over here. This is the drill over here. It all kind of fits together whenever we work. So we get out there and just break it down pretty simple. All right, so here we go, same thing. Get lined up, get through all of our schemes, and then we go. So it's the same deal. We get all set. So we got our fan block on the front side, a backside wrap, a back block from the center, and then two fan blocks on the front side. And so they just do those little pods, the same drills that we do. We do this two on two drill all the time over here where they learn their spacing. Just open up those edges and go. And so it makes it really simple for them when they get in the game because we keep working those small groups all the time. Um, all right, so let's go with next angle here. All right, so here we go. Same thing, fan block on the front side, a couple down blocks. Now, so we inserted the tight end, changes some rules for us, but the guys know what they're doing. But we got a back block, a wrap, and a fan block. So all the stuff's the same. Doesn't really change. They just keep working in those little groups. Because you never really do a whole lot with three guys. It's just kind of usually two. The other guy does his own thing. So kind of helps there. Let's see, here's another one. All right, number four. So next one. All right, we'll end zone view. All right, so we got the front's different. We got you know three tech over here in a shade on this side. As you can see, we're fanning. It's our backside wrap. So here we're running it to the um, to the shade. So our guard over here knows. Well, I've got a guy inside me. I tackles. We got a fan block, so I got to block down. So they kind of know the rules, what their partner's doing, and I think it helps us. We don't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I think a lot of because they the way we work the groups and the way that they understand what everyone else is doing. Um, as anybody, you know what your partner's doing. It makes it a lot easier. So when we come through, we get we get a pretty clean opening from the fact that they understand on the front side what you're doing on the blocks, uh, taking your down block steps. There's a good example, taking that back catch hand right here um, from our guard. Um, he's doing his down block technique. He's gonna take this back hand, he's gonna catch him right there on the arm. Um, really helps get that kid moving into that gap, bang right there. And he punches and presses right through just like that. So you can see a really good example of that catch hand on a down block. His down step, his J step gets him in front, but he brings his outside arm and just right bang right there, catches him and presses him up under the pad and gets that kid moving. So it does a real good job with that. That's where that catch hand of that down block is really big. And you can see on the front side, our fan block, it does a good job. Our tackle does a really good job over here on this side of hopping inside and torquing his body to turn this kid out, which really helps open that hole on the front side of the run, right there. He takes that inside arm and just sticks him out and boom, he cranks him out of there, opens that hole. So now this kid's peeking. And if he's peeking out there, he's in the wrong spot. And then we're ready to go. So that's a good example of how those, just repping that to death really, really pays off. Um, so you've got another one. So now we got two, three techniques right here. So it's different, um, different look. Get an outside three and a three here. So those techniques, kids looking at it, the double fan over here. He's the backside wraps. So the center's got to block back all the way to a three, which is really far. But we work on that idea coming flat. The guard knows he's got to come all the way back, so he's got to understand his, his step. So he takes his little mini uh, skip pull just to get a little bit of depth and get around him. And then he can get vertical and knows his inside out leverage. So a real good example of, of getting through, understanding what your partner's doing. So you can do it any way you want, uh, a little pin and pull or the buck sweep concept. Um, you don't need to really install it. You can just say, hey, these are our blocks. I'll be honest, this helps us in scout team a ton. You get scout team cards, the kids just know the blade put the blocks on and the kids know what, what's going on. Um, so it really helps with that. So here's an example. Um, let's get to end zone copy. All right, here we go. So in this case, we brought in an extra tackle. We've got a tight end over here. So we're loading up this side. But by rule, they all know they're all down blocking. He knows he's a front side kick out from our pod. He knows he's base blocking, backside wrapping the fan. So they know what they're doing. 
and we rep all that over and over again. So you can see here we go, all the down blocks, the kick out and wrap through. So we get some pretty decent movement, but they understand the angles uh, and our, our, our tight end does a good job bringing that outside catch hand as he comes down right there. And he, he gets to the outside and it presses him just to get enough of him and we can get around to the outside and he keeps working it. So it's a pretty good example of what we can do with that technique. Okay, here's another one, same thing. All right, so we've got the same concept. All right, so our guys have to know what they're doing. So we go to our, our down block on the front side, pull and kick out. So we do that drill, we do the front side kick out drill, but here we get a log. So seven comes in a wrong arm it, and so he just logs them. So when we do the log drill, I understand how it works because we do that uh, when we do our pods. So they, they know how the end zone copy here. So you can see this view is pretty easy to see. Down blocks, front side kick out. As we come around, boom, our guard over here gets a log. We just follow around and there we go. So it's just that, that rep, rep, repping it over and over again. That really helps. A uh, lot of guys in the box, loading them up. Chance to get some extra guys in the game, All right, which helps. Same thing. I kick out wrap through. So we do it here. A lot of arrows on this on this slide. We got a <laughs> down block, down block, down block, a front side kick out, base blocking, backside wrap. These guys are covered, so they're just gonna zone double right here, working up to the next level and the fan block. If they get there, they get there, but they at least they don't understand they're not gonna let this guy go. So as long as they understand the concept. All right, so there we go. Well, I love to see them work the way to the backer right here that wants to shoot the gap. Sure, uh, I think he was a little nervous, this guy being in the gap right there. But they worked the way around. Good example of our front side down, down block. Um, here you can see we're in a three point stance, down by the goal line, so we work on it. Um, so we have that in our, you know, in our, our other tool in the toolbox, I say. And get some movement, and get a kick out, and just, just get it in the end zone. So also you can mix it up in other ways too. So this is a, a different, different example. We run a little, um, we run a little hand to hand here, uh, which is a little bit different than what we normally do. Um, so we're working our way around. And as he goes, all right there, it's the same scheme we run, just our pods. So it's something that you could literally put in that week and just say, okay, fellas, this is how we're gonna do it. You can give it a name. Um, I just know that we're all doubled down up here. I know the backside kick out and you're the backside wrap. And then the whole thing's done. Uh, you don't have to really rep the heck out of it. Just tell them what they're doing. They should know it because you rep it all the time. And when you get in your pod, you get to see it over and over again. And that really helps to see how it works. Two down blocks, a back block, backside kick out and the backside wrap. So it's just your normal schemes, but the way we, the way we teach it, really, really gets us a lot of reps and gives us a chance to, to get a little more out of it. So that's what, um, that's what we were really doing um, a lot. I don't know how to get out of this. Yeah. Um, but that's how, we, uh, that's how we try to mix in our pods and, and translate those into how we put plays in. We don't really do a lot of like lining up and saying, okay guys, this week, you're gonna do this here, you're gonna do this here. I just kind of tell them and they just kind of do it. Uh, we don't have a ton of time in practice. We never stop practice to go over a play uh, if it's wrong. We, we just keep rolling. We got to coach on the fly. And everybody says that, but we really coach on the fly. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of, <clears throat> it's a lot of that. It's a lot of, um, when you're out there in the field, barking at them, getting it corrected and going hundred miles an hour. Um, and it makes it real easy to explain. And the kid said, what do I do if he walks up? And you just tell him. You guys got a, got a fan over here, or you guys got a double, and they just kind of know it because we use the same terminology um, all the time. As we had a had a <clears throat> had a former player come back, like I said, and, and help coach this year. It was really funny because he was saying the same things that I would say to the point where the kids were giggling because the phrases were the same and the terminology was the same all the time because we just work on it so much. Um, so we we like to use those pods. We use them almost exclusively. Um, they translate really well to your pass protection too, um, one-on-ones, two-on-twos, um, those kind of things. Um, 
We do sometimes uh, group into four. If you ever want to do uh, take that four man pod, you can mix it up. You can do uh, three guys and have guys wrap and fold, however you want to do it. But that's pretty much how we teach almost everything on the O line, and especially in the off season with seven man groups. It's just those small little drill work over and over and over again that that really really helps. 